All right, so this is going to be a quick video showing how to open up and disassemble this Lenovo ThinkPad E580. So first, we're gonna be using a JS1 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. All right, if the screws come out, you wanna make sure to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and length. The way I do that is I put them flat side down, like the screw top down in the pattern I remove them. All right, but for now, we're just gonna undo all the screws, okay? Just like this. And then we're gonna pop the bottom cover off. If this video helps you out, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Um, every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. If you can't, um, it'll be greatly uh, appreciated and helpful if you can watch a few of my other videos just to tell the YouTube algorithm to share my channel. All right, anyways, once we've gotten all the screws undone, I'm gonna get my fingernails in here. You can use plastic pry tools, but I find this works the best. I'll get my fingernails in there, push on the back with my uh, thumbs, and pull up with my fingernails. You can hear it popping just like that. Okay, we're gonna go around to the side edges. Same thing, continue all the way around. Make sure you don't have any USB devices or power cables or stuff plugged in, okay? And we're just gonna continue uh, going around and popping the bottom cover up. All right, once we got all the edges out, this side we um, will just kind of leave. We might have to pop up this though. Okay, if it gets stuck, you might have to go over here and pop that, and there we go. If it gets stuck here, you kind of just have to wiggle it like this to pop it out, but there we go. That's what the bottom cover looks like inside. We'll set that aside. If your screws are popping out, you do want to be careful. All right, anyways, we have a 2.5 inch SATA SSD in here right now. Oh, what just fell out of there? Something fell out of it. I flipped it over. Sounded like some broken plastic or something, maybe. Um, anyways, <clears throat> we have a two and a half inch SATA uh, hard drive in here that we did upgrade to an SSD. To remove it, you have this little flip latch. Actually, let me let me um, get a thumbnail here first. Sorry. Okay, and then let's zoom in, and I'm going to show you how to remove this. Pretty simple. Um, you don't have to remove the battery or disconnect the battery for this, but you'll flip this latch up. Then you'll carefully you pull up slightly and pull this back, all right? You wanna pull it up because these wings will get caught down below. And then to remove the hard drive or SSD, there's this tab, pull it straight up and then pull it over to the side, this side, and it swings out just like that. The reason why you gotta do that is there's this little protruding plastic piece that will hook itself into here. And if you don't, you can't get that out. All right, this piece comes out pretty easily. I just get my uh, fingernail in that there. You can use pry tools and then I just pry it like that, okay? Then we're gonna go the other side and do the same thing. The reason I don't just grab this top piece is this uh, layer here can come out. So you do wanna loosen it up by prying that up first. And there's the two and a half inch or the SATA connector, all right? I'm gonna put that back in because we're gonna leave this drive in there since we already upgraded it. This piece you do transfer over to the new drive just by pulling it out like that. There's no screws. It just has these little plastic things that kind of push into the screw screw holes or screw mounts okay just like that and we're gonna now put this back in um, it's easiest to kind of get this cable in first so kind of just line it up and it does help to go in at an angle like that wiggle it around make sure it's all the way in and then slide your finger over that latch to put it down this has two little nibs that need to go in first so go in at an angle like this and then click this down all right and then you have this uh, for some reason, my screen for my Chromecast thing stopped recording or turned off, so I can't see what's going on now. I'm going to wait till it restarts, and I'll be back. All right, see you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. I'm not sure what happened there, but anyways, there we go. You got the fingerprint connector or reader there. There's the flip latch there. This cable goes around and plugs in right there. Okay, you have a slot here for an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. Um... Yeah, uh, I probably should have put one of those because it's faster, but this kind of SSD is already way faster than what they were using. Spinning hard drive, um, the customer doesn't want to spend crazy amounts, so we're going to stick with that. The M.2 SSD isn't too much more expensive. You can maybe get it for like anywhere from, depending what speed you get, it'll probably be like $10 to $60 more. Um, so it could be even more than double the price. Um, so keep that in mind depending what you get. Um, it does come with the screw there, so that's nice. That goes in at an angle slightly and then pushes in, and then you put the screw on top. You do have to take the screw out first. 
Okay, to get out the RAM, there's these two tabs, pull it to the side, pops up, then you can pull this out. This is an 8 gig PC4 2666V stick of RAM. You can switch this or upgrade it to two 16 gig sticks. I don't know if they carry 32 gig sticks, but if they do, you can even put two 32 gig sticks. All right, you got the CPU soldered to the motherboard here. Um, so it's not uh, replaceable unless you have some crazy expensive special tools. Um, if you need to redo the thermal paste, you can remove it there, take the four screws out, and then usually it helps to kind of wiggle it sideways. You don't want to just pull straight up because the thermal paste will stick to it and then you'll end up bending this. <clears throat> All right, you got the wireless card here. If you need some model information, you can probably see it there. Um, they got the, for some reason, they put the black wire with an A sticker here to the auxiliary white arrow. Normally you put the black wire to the black one, but they just did it that way. The gray wire is going to the black one that says main and has a little sticker that has an M on it for main. All right, to get those out, you just go from the tail and you just pull straight up. I'm going to leave them there because sometimes the solder for those connectors are bad and I don't want to try pulling it up one time and it rips it out and then they're going to have no wireless. LCD LVDS connector is here. This kind of connector, you grab this tab, you pull it up and you pop it out there. But warning, you do want to disconnect the battery and then open up the laptop, press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds before messing with this because if for some reason it goes slightly crooked or anything or sometimes the gap, if it's just enough, it might spark and it can fry it. I've had some customers do that, so be very careful with that. All right, looks like there's an L, uh, sorry, CMOS, BIOS, RTC, uh, real-time clock battery connector here. So battery's most likely stuck underneath here. Um, you have the speaker connector here, it pulls out. Um, usually I'll just grab the wings and wiggle it to pull it out. Same as the CMOS battery. And then the wire from this speaker goes to the other speaker so that they both connect to the same spot. All right, you also have this USB, um, what is this? <sighs> micro SD card, ethernet board. All right, there's a micro SD card, USB, and whatever else is there. That's on another one of these kinds of connectors. And this looks like also one of those that you kind of pop up here, <clears throat> but I don't want to mess with it because it's not broken. So the only thing is their computer was super slow because the hard drive was bad. Um, and that's pretty much it. The speakers are just held in with rubber pieces. So you can kind of just, wig oops, sorry. You can just wiggle it to pull it out. <clears throat> We're going to leave it there. And the fan doesn't seem to be held down with anything. It is um, taped onto the heat sink here though. So if you're going to remove the fan, probably want to also remove the heat sink or take the whole motherboard out and flip it upside down. Sometimes there's screw that, screws that hold it to this metal plate. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I just have to finish installing windows on it for them. Um, we're going to go ahead and put this thing back together. And that's pretty much all there is to it. All right. Uh, we'll just grab the bottom cover here, line everything back up, click everything back together, make sure that all the little clips re-engage. <clears throat> you can actually look from the side and then make sure everything is clicked in. You can see there's a gap there, so you want to push that in. Okay, make sure it all clicks in from all sides. Looks good. And then we just get all the screws back in, and that's pretty much it. Uh, again, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade or repair their device as well. And of course, if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. If you can't, um, it'd be greatly appreciated if you can just watch a bunch of my other videos uh, because that tells the YouTube algorithm to share my channel with others and actually helps quite a bit. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much it. You're welcome to stay as I get all these screws back in. You will have to install Windows or clone the operating system or the old hard drive to the new one if you want to be able to just boot it up. Um, so keep that in mind. If you put a blank hard drive or SSD in there, um, you're basically your computer's not going to uh, start up unless you have a boot drive in that M.2 SSD already. Um, but yeah, if you're changing the hard drive or SSD, uh, keep in mind the operating system, Windows, is on there. So if you swap it out with a blank one, obviously your computer's not going to turn on because it no longer has Windows on it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. We're just going to plug this thing back in, power it on. They did have this little wireless mouse USB thing, so I'll put that back in there. Flip this over, and we'll just power it up. And it looks like this one, because I didn't remove the CMOS BIOS battery or anything, it's starting up without plugging anything in. Um, and, oops, 
there you go it's starting up so we just started this uh install we gotta do all the driver installs and everything and yeah see you guys in the next one let's drop this pipe